Well, today is another new guitar day. This is Orangewood. Today we're going to meet Oliver Black in all its splendid glory. Another acoustic guitar heading this way to you soon. All right, here comes the introduction of Oliver Black. Orange wood. Send it in a nice case. The case is included in the price. Ooh, this is not even wrapped up. This is wide open and ready to look at. Wow. So here's all of the black. Beautiful. Very pretty. Very pretty. There's Oliver. This is a nice looking guitar. I think you might be able to see. Uh, it's a solid wood top anyway. Maybe not the back and, and sides, but it's got a solid wood top. Um, or it might be solid wood all the way through. I'm not sure. I have to look it up again and see what it says. It's very pretty right out of the box. It's got a nice little white trim line. Um, it's a matte finish. Uh, it's got black keys, which I like. Um, it's got a little bit of inlay work. Needs to be tuned up and taken care of. So we're going to uh, do this on the bench here in just a minute. But there's a close-up look at the headstock. Oliver in black. It's a full-size dreadnought. Pretty back. Good looking piece. So we'll string it up, we'll not string it up, we'll just play it up in a minute. Tune it up, I mean, okay? We'll see what right, it sounds like. Now, this is the Oliver Black Live as it comes right out of the box. Let me take that off, you can see the headstock. It has a nice little inlay, the flying dove or whatever it is. It's black, a matte finish with a nice pinstripe. It looks real good. The setup, frankly, right out of the box, is without a doubt just fine. Um, all I've done is tune this up, and it was almost in tune. They only brought it down just a trifle. Um, the action is very good. It might be a little. There might be a little bit of a back bow. Um, the action might actually even be too low because I think I feel like I'm getting a bit of a buzz on um, some of this. Let me play it for you and you can see what I mean. I'm just going to shut this tuner off. We'll save some battery life. Now I've got this set on a uh, the sound is inside in the hole. There's a tone control in the hole. It's a little inconvenient, I think. I'd rather have it up on the body, but I guess it's less intrusive to the sound that way. But it means that you, to make the settings and stuff is, I think, a bit of a pain in the neck. But I just adjusted the tone and the volume you can go all the way down. This is just acoustic. Some of these strings, uh, this third string probably is a little, a little too close. So I may do a truss rod adjustment. I'm going to change the strings, uh, just because I'm going to go all black, and I'm going to blacken the nut. I'm going to blacken the the uh, bridge. This is going to be a totally black guitar, except for the uh, tuners, which are chrome. <laughs> with black heads, uh, but it plays pretty good. It plays very good. It's not 
a box, but for a low cost, solid top, particle, not particle board, but you know, plywood sides, um, it's a pretty good, pretty good sounding guitar. because the action is so low. So I think I'm going to do a truss rod adjustment and try to get, take that away a little bit from the, um, from the fingerboard. And this has 11 to 52 uh, Ernie Ball, Earthworm strings, or Earthworm, whatever they are. But it's pretty cool. But I just wanted to play it for you the way it came out of the box. And from right out of the box, it's a very good guitar. It's not a great guitar, but it's a very good guitar. A solid, playable instrument, especially for a beginner or an intermediate or anybody who just wants to kick around guitar. I like it. I like it pretty good. I'm going to do a few things to it to personalize it to myself. Nothing spectacular. Be right back. Okay, we're back here again with the, on the bench, the Oliver Black by Orangewood. Uh, this is a nice looking guitar. It's got a solid uh, spruce top, I think. Or mahogany, I forget which, it doesn't much matter. And then the sides are plywood, essentially, you know. They're uh, plasterboard or <laughs> put together wood. Uh, it's not a solid wood. Uh, they never like to tell you that. They always try to dress it up as some composite name that um, is really phony as hell. But, it's still a pretty good guitar. And what I'm going to do is take the strings off and change them. I got a heavier gauge set of Phosphor Bronze uh, Black Beauties. Because I'm going to go all black with this guitar, seeing as how that's the motif it's set in. Um, I'm going to blacken the nut. I'm going to blacken the, the uh, bridge down below and uh, make it all one big, beautiful black guitar. Um, because it, ooh, I didn't mean to kick you guys around, sorry. Didn't mean to give you a kick in the nose. So we're just going to take the strings off now and uh, get to changing the strings and blackening up the nut and the bridge. Not too thrilling, uh, but better than a sharp stick in the eye. And it's uh, my guitar, and I'm going to do what I want to do with it. And um, that's kind of the way it is. This guitar costs uh, $275. It's about the mid-price range of the Orangewood, Orangewood collections. This is where you start getting into the better quality, I think, of the Orangewoods. The other ones are made of uh, um, plywood. Um, and they play okay. For $125 to $175, they're a pretty decent little instrument. Um, but as you move up in the price range, you start to get into their better, the better side of their collection. Um, so I think this is going to end up being a pretty good guitar. I want to try it with the heavier gauge strings because I think it will give it a deeper and richer sound um, than the uh, Ernie Balls that it comes with. So that's what we're up to right now. And like I said, it's nothing spectacular. Oh, just a small change. Um, and we're going to do some coloration to stay in the black motif, if you will. Because um, I like the black guitar. I like color guitars now, too. I've really um, kind of come around on that. I initially liked everything always black. And um, I found myself getting a little bit uh, too blacked out on that, you know. Uh, so I kind of changed my speed. I did a bunch of electric guitars in all kinds of different flavors. I've done modifications to a bunch of different electric guitars. Um, I've got... Uh, 
Um, several different brands that have come into fashion lately, or I guess over the last bunch of years, you know. I've really only been messing around with this stuff as seriously as I have been for a couple of years now. I became a collector um, of guitars just because it's a good hobby. It keeps me out of trouble. I'm an old guy, and uh, I like doing stuff with my hands. I like figuring things out. I like working puzzles. And that's what doing modifications and changes to, the, to uh, any guitar often brings up to you is uh, puzzles. you got to figure out what the hell to do. Um, and things aren't always as clearly, don't go as clear and as well as they look like they're going to when you start or like it's supposed to be. Now we're going to pop these strings out the bottom. I use my wire cutter. I can lay it right in up against the bridge and um, not do any damage and pop these guys out fairly easily. Oh yeah, <laughs> so you say. Um, that's a tight fit in there. Um, I don't know why it's such a tight fit. It's just a tight fit, but it's fine. Uh, so I'm going to take the rest of these off and we'll get around to um, blackening up the um, the bridge and the nut with a magic marker and try to make it all blend in to the black. I know that people will say you'll lose the highlight of the white. Eh, I kind of like going black. Uh, and again, why do I do that? Because it's my guitar. I paid him the money and I can do whatever the hell I want to do with it. And I hope you feel the same way about your stuff. Do what makes you feel good. Do what you think is good for you. And the heck with anybody who's got any complaints about what you're doing. Uh, because in the bottom line is, you're doing it for yourself, to please yourself. So, please yourself. I'll be right back. Hey, Stevie, back again. Now, listen, we're going to take the bridge out. We're going to go inside and just feel. That's going that way. And this is all stuck together pretty good, I think. Um, I'm happy with the height of everything. I don't think I'm going to mess with anything at all. I just want to look and see if there's a shim under here. Just because we're here. It'll let me know if there's a little bit of latitude in what I do. I don't want to damage this piezo. I just want to pick it up. It's like handling a little earthworm. No, and there is nothing underneath. So there's no um, shim. It's not shimmed at all. So you're playing right on the plastic. And that's pretty good. Um... And so what we're going to do with that is hit that with some magic marker and make it black. And then we're going to come up to the other end where the nut is. And we're going to tape this off. Um, and I'll show you, you know, it's not a big deal. Huh? I'm just going to put some tape on here to mostly to protect the fingerboard. So I don't get any anything on there, any marker on there, because we don't want that to be black. We want that to be what it is. And then, so what we'll do then, we've got this black, and this might be a different look black. It may be a shinier black. So I really don't want to get marker on the black that's already here. I just want to meet it. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I want to meet the nut here at the end, and I, we can get to each side. Now, one of these has a flat side. That ain't it. That's the round edge. I want to use the flat edge, like the chisel edge, and go right across the front with a sweep and make this whole thing black. Simple. No heavy lifting. We'll try not to destroy anything else while we're here. We'll leave no prisoners. But we'll try not to do any damage while we're here either. 
okay? Because we just want to blacken up the white bone nut. It says it's bone. I hope they ain't kidding. Because um, bone's a little bit more expensive. And like Leonard Cohen says, I hope they didn't come here to fool you. So we'll get that as black as we can. Try to get in nice and tight there. I got my head on the way, I know, I'm sorry. I just want to look over the other side, make sure I covered it good. And then we've got to do this other side with a steady hand and a good eye. And I only got one good eye and that eye ain't that good. That's why I wear my glasses all the time, because I can't see for shit without them, especially in close work. Um, the other thing i got to do is check all these tuners. They seem like they're real tight and stuff already, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but we will check them. Um, with, uh, it's probably a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. Is it a 10? Yeah, it's a 10. And they're tight. So the guys out at Orange Ward, Orangewood, did a good job setting this up. So all that stuff seems good. Um, we can flip it over and take a look at the screws. Oops, there goes the bridge. Um, take a look at these screws here and make sure they're tight while we're here. Um, they're pretty snug. This is like gilding the lily. There's no protective condom on the back. I don't think there is anyway. If it is, it's a clear. Um, I'm going to give it one more scrape with my fingernail. Oh, there is a cover on there. Ooh! So we did find something else to do here. Um, so that just protects it in shipping. I mean, I've seen, I've worked on guitars that were years old that still have these protective covers on the back. I think that's kind of funny, you know. Uh, I know I've, I've done it with my own guitars and not paid much attention and, you know, move right along and, you, you know, it's five years later and you still got stuff on there that was supposed to come off the day you brought it home. Uh, and that's the end of that. So that takes care of those guys. And we'll tip this over again. No, the piezo popped out. And then we'll take a look with the magic reveal uh, that we'll do all in live time here. Yeah? It's kind of nice. Let's see how that looks. Pretty good. There's a little white stripe down right by the edge of the fingerboard. And I'm not, not going to go after that. It's fine. It'll match with the white um, edging. So we're done up that end. We're going to come back down here and deal with the... Uh, um, the bridge that I got to chase up off the floor here went somewhere. There it is. We found it. Thank God. It's like Columbus discovered America after everybody had already been here. Uh, what a great discovery. He found a place where people already lived. <laughs> they just didn't know there was anybody else here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were home. We're here to take your land and your property and everything you own. <sighs> Not very nice guys in the long run. All right, so let's see if you can see this. Yes. So we're going to make another blow for the dark side. We're going on the dark side again. We're going to go black with the bone saddle. This is a cheap and easy way to make a black, a white thing black. I don't suggest you try this on any anatomy pots, or well, you'll really be sorry. But, here on your guitar, if you're in the mood, you can convert a white piece of bone to a black piece fairly easily. And economically, and rather than having to buy and pay the money 
for another saddle, you can keep the one you got and just blacken it up. And get a little bit more black in that corner. Now we gotta let it dry before we touch the other end, or we'll end up with black fingers. And that's not really what I want to do. I don't want my fingers to get black if I can help it. So we'll move down a little bit tighter and we'll challenge ourselves to try to get this as good as we can, as easily as we can. Oh, I can feel it. I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be too bold and get my fingers black <laughs> before the night's over. Uh, I'm gonna go in here to this little crevice and see if we can get that little hill black. I got the same thing on the other end. Getting in that little crook or nook. Maybe it's a crook nook. All right, so we'll give that a second of three to calm down. And we'll let that relax for a minute. And uh, then we're going to put it back in and we're going to put the black beauties on. And I'll clean this up um, a little bit. This matte finish is pretty good. It still gives you a little bit of fingerprinting if you touch it too much. Um, but it ain't bad. I like the inlays they did here, too. This uh, flying wing or whatever they call it, I don't know. It's a mother of pearl inlays. That are pretty cool. They got the wing. That's nice. And I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm not going to mess with the, um, the fingerboard at all. I'm not going to do any oil on that or nothing. Uh, it's brand new. It should be fine. Uh, maybe the next time we change strings, we'll get involved with a little bit of... Uh, dressing of the fretboard with some uh, with some oil but uh, not today this is new it should be just fine um, now I may have talked my way through to the drying of the uh, magic marker we'll get to the other end of this one now and do this to that I don't think that's coming off in my hand on the other end while we're distracted up here. I think it's still staying covered. I'm going to do the tip and try to get into that little cleft up here. And we'll do the outside where it's still white. Try to get it covered over. Patience is the name of the game here. Yeah. Well, that's going to go back into the slot. It's getting pushed back up by the um, piezo that's sticking out there. So that's cool. All right, so that's that. Um, I'm thinking over again whether I should do anything with the body as far as cleaning it or putting any wax on it or anything? I don't think so. I don't think that would be a, the best idea in the world. I don't want to introduce anything else to the surface here. I think I'm just going to take the strings out. Now this is a, a seriously, a serious upgrade of string that we're doing here too. Oh, I should check the neck. While we're doing this and getting ready to go here, let's um, check the neck for straightness while the strings are off and we'll see what position we're in. Now we're just getting a little bit of a buzz. Not a lot, just a trifle. Um, and I may want to um, give this truss rod just a small adjustment. Um, am I in the right side? All right, so we've got a little bit of a back bow. I can feel this rocking back and forth. So this, this is coming up here in the middle just a bit. So I am going to give this 
a little truss rod adjustment. We've got to find the right truss rod wrench. Righty tighty. We should, uh, oh, I did. I got it right on the first one. So that's a little spin. Are you with me? No, you're not seeing shit. So let's bring you down here and I'll show you. I got a truss rod wrench. There's a nut for the truss rod that you may be able to see up in there. There it is right there. Okay, that's a truss rod nut. That allows you to change the shape of the neck as long as it's working correctly. And this one is working easy as pie. It's loosey-goosey. Um, as a matter of fact, it's almost in neutral. It's not doing a heck of a lot. So I'm just going to take an extra turn and put a little bit more tension on the truss rod. And then we'll take another measurement and see what we did. I'd like to be flat as a pancake when I did that. Okay, so we got rid of the back bow. And this stick is sitting flat as a pancake. Um, the neck gauge is sitting flat. There's no rocking. Before when I uh, had it on here, I was rocking back and forth. So now when we put the strings on, um, it should bring that up and give us just enough relief to get us where we want to be playability-wise uh, with these heavier strings. Now these are 13 to 56. I'm going up fairly heavy here. Um, maybe beyond what I should, but I want to try them first and see how it goes. Um, I don't think I've got anything to lose. If I break the neck, <laughs> I'll be the proud owner of a, of a nice birdhouse. And i got plenty of birds out back who'd love a new place to live. So anyway, the Black Beauties, 3rd, 6th, 2nd, and 4th, let's try these guys. And the reason I wanted to go to the Black Beauties is because they're black. <laughs> and this is the Oliver Black guitar. So, let me bring you down the other end. And I'll show you placing the first couple of strings. And I'll put the rest of them in and uh, leave you guys in the dust. And we'll pick it up afterwards. Alright. So this is the sixth and the third. So if we give this a little bend, we'll go the third one into the third. And let it flop in out of the way for a minute. We'll give this guy a little bend, so it'll move out of the way, I hope, when we put it in. Alright, so let's take this down here. Now I'm catching the pin. nice way you got the strings off. You can mess around with this a little bit um, and try to get the pin placement good. Okay, that's that. And I got to put the piezo in. It's wanting to come out. It's wanting to work its way up, as they say. So we're going to bring that down. And I think I may plant this one just to... Um, Hold that. Um, let's bring it up the other end for a minute. And we'll do this next number three string just for fun. And um, we'll place it on number three. We want number three peg. All right, so we'll get that up there. Was my winder. You can't see me, can you? Let's bring this down. We'll show you what we're doing up here. Big thrills, huh? So we'll wrap that around that away and get this going down under from now on to finish the wrap. I should get my power screwdriver 
to make this job simpler, faster, quicker, smarter, easier. Smarter, not harder. Okay, so we got that down where it belongs. And we'll finish tightening up that black string onto the olive of black orange wood guitar. The, the six strings that are placed and that'll give you kind of an idea of what it's going to look like. Alright, why I like the black to try to just keep the black color going. So we're right, so the strings are all on now. That's the Black Beauties. And that's a fairly heavy gauge set of strings. Sorry about kicking around. That's 13 to 56 um, in basic black. I checked the uh, string height and we're at about 464. So if you put a quarter there, there's just a little. So we're a little higher than 464. I did check it with a gauge. I could take a little bit more um, relief out of, ooh, excuse me, out of the neck, but I think I'm just going to leave it alone for a day or so and see how it all settles in. But it looks like it's in pretty doggone good shape right now. Okay, so we'll give it a little bit of a play just to give you a demo. And then I think I'm going to do a Leonard Cohen piece as an introductory song for this black guitar and see how that goes. Okay, um, let's run through a quick tune. It's in tune right now. You gotta cut the strings off, but... I don't have any of that ringing that I heard before. So it's all together now. I got that one pin popping a little bit. I may have to reset that. Uh, but it's looking pretty good. Not bad. All black, black pins, black strings, black nut, black bridge. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. I like it. It plays nice. It sounds nice. Um, is it worth 275? Probably so. You know? Uh, like I said, it's not a Martin, but it's a nice guitar. There we go. Done for now. It's over. I got some black strap buttons, too. They're going on. And there they are. The black strap buttons. Beauties. Well, there's the all of the black. And my shop assistant, Vector, slept through the whole thing. He took a nap. He was done pushing all his stuff around. He's quite a guy. And this is the Oliver SBK Live Black. Orange wood. Nice guitar. We just changed the strings over and did a little bit of an adjustment on the neck. Uh, made it look really good, I think. Changed things over to black, to black, to black. Um, I played it, it plays good. We'll play it again.